Somja Spandana Somanchi, RWTH Aachen, Germany. Uh, hello, everyone. Now, let me begin this presentation by talking about this rather colloquial picture that Intel came up with not so long ago, which is titled, If Transistors Were People, which explains how the number of transistors on a microchip in a computer, for instance, has gone up from 2,000, which is probably four times the audience that we have here, to about 1.3 billion, which was then the population of China. Well, right now it's the population of India, but you get the point. Now, imagine trying to squeeze this one billion population into this very hall that we are in. Pretty suffocating to imagine, right? Now, going on similar lines, um, with our needs for faster computers never ending, this means that we'll have to squeeze millions of transistors onto a small microchip, which is, yeah, barely an inch big. And to do this, this has to work. <laughs> Uh, and the way to do this, as we can see from this graph here, which is something called the Moore's Law, it, sh it shows that we've gone down from about uh, 180 nanometers here in 2002 to about 19 nanometers already in 2015. And if this trend continues, we'll have to go down and down with the size of the transistors, and until at one point we reach the atomic scale, the size of the atoms, and you cannot go down any further and make smaller electronics. So what's next? Now, the way to do th this is exactly the wall that I want to break, the wall of atoms. And how do I do that? By going to a material called graphene, which is a monoatomic layer thick in itself. And um, graphene is not new. It's uh, nothing but a monolayer of the pencil lead that we used to write with, so it's pretty relatable too. But what makes it so much more interesting for electronics is the fact that it's super flexible, yet it is transparent, so much stronger than steel, and much better than copper in terms of conductivity. Imagine electronics that could be flexible, strong, and super good quality. Now, what I do in particular, is to use these graphene sheets and make tiny, tiny islands with them in the laboratory, which are called quantum dots. And this is what a quantum dot fresh from the lab would look like. And this is pretty much similar to a regular transistor in terms of its components. But what makes its functioning so much more better is that at this really small scale, there are a lot of quantum mechanical effects that come into play, as previous speakers have pointed out. And it turns out that as I go down and scale, it perf its performance only increases, which is not the case with traditional electronics. And not just that, uh, it is also possible to it is also possible that you can transfer electrons in in, uh, in single electrons, which means that this requires. Yes.